Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. Boy, we got some hot stuff. We got Michael here, Braxton, ret retired Foreign Service officer. And it, it's so many things that we can talk about. But what, what we're going to do, we're going to start with this uh, assassination in Russia. Tell us, what, how do you think that's going to affect Putin? Um, actually, it, it shines a light on justice in Russia under Putin, under Vladimir Putin. Um, as President Obama said, no one really knows uh, who's guilty, how uh, the assassination actually came about. The Russians are investigating. Some of the stories on the internet, though, are quite interesting. One uh, story uh, says that the uh, Russian FSB, which is the... It's like the SS. No, the successor. <laughs> the it's the successor to uh, Russia's uh, KGB, mm. the Soviet Union's KGB. Mm. Um, <clears throat> they are essentially carrying the 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 water for a a theory that Chechen separatists uh, assassinated Boris Nemtsov in order to bring Putin's governance into disrepute. Um, this is a little bit, uh, this seems a little bit contrived to Western minds, mm -hmm. but again, we don't know the truth of the matter. Uh, it, uh, on the other hand, uh, Jana Nemtsova, uh, Nemtsov's uh, daughter, who is a journalist, says that in She's Chechen too. No, right? no, 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 no. She. Yeah. This family is from Novgorod. Oh. Novgorod is a is a historic uh, Russian city in in the north central part of Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, it's north of Moscow, north uh, east of Moscow, and uh, it is it it is one of the receptacles of Russian. History. It, it is highly revered as a place for Russian, as a historical place in Russia. Uh, she says that, as far as she's concerned, it was people who wanted to make Vladimir Putin uh, feel better, mm -hmm. essentially. Uh, that uh, it, it's hard to prove that it's hard to prove any concrete connection between Putin and the murder, but. Uh, there is an assumption by a lot of people mm -hmm. that these kinds of political uh, assassinations in Russia with uh, Anna Politkovskaya and many others, uh, I think there's six or seven, uh, have been sanctioned by Putin. people who really want there to be uh, no challenge to the current government. Right. Okay. Well, uh uh, this gentleman, he represents a group, the way his group thinks. So I, I figure it's just like checkers, you know, you make one move, you get rid, you jump over one, you got another one standing there waiting to take his place. Uh, it, it seems like that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Nemtsov was uh, an activist on several issues, but, but the key issue, uh, the key current issue he was an uh, he opposed the Putin govern government on was uh, the uh, military action against the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the Russian argument that Chechens were involved it, uh, also includes that this was a plan hatched by the Ukrainian uh, 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 um, uh, intelligence service, mm -hmm. um, and and this is this only makes but sense. But all that is a supposition, and uh, I noticed that uh, they really they claim to have suspects, and I, I'm sure the system works just like it is here. Is when something happens, you go out and pick out some somebody and and arrest them to. Make it look good that you are doing your job, although the person may not have been involved. But uh, as far as feeding the 
of the media, you say you have, uh, they say they have two or three guys, uh, suspects, they haven't made any names, how it was done, nothing. Well, exactly. Uh, th this is, this is almost an exercise in uh, logic and supposition that puzzles the average um, uh, mind here in the U.S. Uh, unless you're a scholar of Soviet studies. Mm -hmm. uh, why would the Ukrainian intelligence services contract six Chechen killers to assassinate Boris Nemtsov uh, hoping that that assassination would so discredit Putin that he would feel uh, threatened and and use his leverage to pull back uh, to pull the Ukrainian separatists in the eastern part of the Ukraine pull them back from their current attack on Ukrainian forces. That's a little bit. That's a bit of a bridge too far for most people. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, let's jump to the uh, Iran uh, situation, uh, how we are handling it, how Congress is handling it, and how uh, uh, Israel is handling it. Give us your synopsis of uh, uh, why and the effect of it. Well, <clears throat> I, I, you know, as just a retired um, Foreign Service officer, U.S. Foreign Service officer, I was a little surprised, A, that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu came to America to address uh, 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 Congress so close to his own election. Right, two weeks. Right. Mm. Diplomatic protocol usually, uh, uh, usually pushes against this kind of close, uh, uh, closeness between uh, the election and a visit because it puts the United States in the position of choosing sides. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, uh, if, if a head of state, if a head of state is inclined to criticize the policies of our own head of state, seems to me that, uh, seems to me that the House of Representatives is not the proper <laughs> place to do that. Right. The uh, uh, as far as the Iranian, uh, the letter to the Iranians is concerned, uh, it seems to me that uh, you know the vice president's uh, response and and president's response were appropriate. Uh, it it, uh, it and and the I thought the response from uh, the Iranian head of state essentially correcting mm. the supposition and the premise of the letter from the U.S. senators. I thought that was quite cogent. Mm -hmm. and, and I think people need to read that because mm. if ever there is a change in international law that allows a legislature to undo the work of a previous head of state mm -hmm. simply because of political differences yes. right. then the entire then the entire uh, legal international edifice of right. international law uh, comes into question right right so actually uh, uh, doing that uh, and I noticed that the uh, Republicans that uh, uh, sent to, they end the minority but uh, seemed to me they would have known that eventually that would backfire on them because those that uh, uh, were uh, actually went to hear him speak and those that signed the letter is that uh, this is going to be a matter of record because I'm sure uh, they the public know who they are and who who it was led by and the purpose and also uh, their previous record period against this president has been negative. Well, there is a suspicion in the minds of a lot of people, I think, in this country that the motives w were, not, uh, were not entirely uh, pristine and, and, uh, and that they had more to do with political differences with 
uh, our president than with any uh, mm -hmm. desire to uh, improve the terms of the negotiation because how can you improve the terms of a negotiation that is in progress whose terms mm -hmm. you do not know mm -hmm. and therefore cannot understand and if you cannot know the terms and you cannot understand the terms how can you therefore criticize the terms and say that they are inadequate yes and I, I noticed too in uh, all of this uh, in both situations, uh, the prime minister nor the uh, <coughs> excuse me, nor the congressman uh, in their letter or in, in their speech and you know, all have come up with a solution. It's it's uh, you know critical of what's being done, but nobody suggests where it should be done. They just they were just critical. They never. Gay. Well, this is the solution to this, you know. And so, uh, I suppose you could say that there's a precedent for that. Uh, uh, the, the opposition, uh, the president's opponents have adopted the same approach right. with respect to the health care law. Right. Uh, they, they don't have a substitute, but <laughs> right. they, they, <laughs> they criticize what's there. to criticize uh, what the president has done. And in this case, uh, if you do criticize uh, what's, uh, if you do criticize the content of the uh, of the American position, you have to remember that America is not the only participant in these negotiations. These exactly. are multilateral negotiations. Exactly. And so we have uh, we have the uh, EU members plus Germany. Mm -hmm in addition to the United States and the Iranians. This puts the uh, uh, America's allies in a, an extremely awkward position exactly. because they need to understand that what the president's representative says in those negotiations is what the United States, States will support. Representing, right. Yeah. And see, I, I think uh, they haven't uh, realized the effect that that will have in the future. Uh, negotiation with any uh, foreign country or, or any international group is that uh, if they allow this to happen, then what's going to happen is when there's a, a problem, first thing they think about, well, let's see, uh, uh, is Congress it develop a bad relationship, period. Well, indeed, uh, <clears throat> uh, when when President Reagan was in Iceland negotiating with Gorbachev, uh, he didn't need to refer to uh, the Democrats in the Senate in order to uh, garner enough support to conclude an agreement with Gorbachev. Mm -hmm. He simply concluded it in his capacity as President of the United States. Right, and and that that was su sufficient for our allies. But now the allies they don't know say what do the guys really have the power that you're talking about or they're just grandstanding? I think, I, I think most people who understand the American system know that this is, that, that this is unprecedented. Right. It probably will not gain precedence in uh, American uh, diplomacy, uh, nor will it mark or hinder American diplomacy in the future. But it certainly has uh, caused a flurry of comments uh, and responses, mm -hmm. uh, few of which have been positive. Yes. Okay, let, let's get, get to uh, uh, Iraq and uh, Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, is the fact that uh, I noticed that it was uh, quite a few dollars being sent over to Ukraine as far as uh, material is concerned uh, that they approved just yesterday, you know, uh, but uh, they're saying that uh, this is the only thing that's being needed there. And that the fact that when you jump over to uh, uh, ISIS, ISIS is, uh, we can talk about that almost in the same breath. Uh, they're supposedly on the run. What do you think about that ana analysis? 
Well, <clears throat> with regard to the Ukraine, uh, we have to remember that uh, uh, the history of the Ukraine is very, very interesting, interesting in the mm -hmm. modern world. Uh, Ukraine has a very strong connection with Poland number one. Number two, at the end of the Second World War, it took uh, the Soviet Union almost five years to repacify the Ukraine because the Ukraine was looking for an option. Many Ukrainians mm -hmm. were looking for an option. Is this because they have relatives in uh, the other country? Uh, no, no, it mm -hmm. was because it was because the chaos that the that the German invasion imposed on uh, during its occupation of the Ukraine mm -hmm. uh, was so severe that once the Germans were driven out, the Ukrainians dreamed of self-governance. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, that is a government without Stalin. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when the Germans came in, some Ukrainians welcomed the Germans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until they found out what they were well, about. What they were about, right? Yeah. What, what, really? Yeah. 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 No, seriously. Okay. And so pacif pacifying in the Russian mind, in the mind of, of Russian, those who would govern Russia, pacifying the Ukraine is a serious matter. Mm -hmm. It is uh, the Soviet Union, it was the Soviet Union's breadbasket. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, but how do, how do they look at the fact that we're pouring so much money into Ukraine now? Like I said, the, just a couple of days, they were 750,000, all kinds of equipment and things like that. The Russians, the, the relationship that we uh, have with them. It, it is a lot of money to you and me and many, mm. of, many others in the United States. Mm. In the grand scheme of what it takes to stop a determined Russian attack against Ukraine, it's not that much. Oh, I see. That's what you weigh. It's it's easier to supply them with the goods than to get in hand-to-hand uh, uh, -hand combat. I, I think so. I mean, let me give you a metric, uh, two, mm -hmm. two quick metrics from World War II. Number one, uh, when uh, it, at the end of World War II, it was determined that the U.S. lost about 405,000 men mm -hmm. and some civilians. Mm -hmm. Uh, Russia lost 26 million, mm -hmm. 405,000, 26 million. million yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, when 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 Germany initially attacked the Soviet Union in 1941, June 22nd, uh, they put 4.5 million men on the on the Russian, on the Soviet frontier. Mm -hmm. uh, 4.5 million men couldn't pacify the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. How is $750,000 worth of aid to the Ukraine mm -hmm. going to oh. stop a determined Russian attack? Right. Mm -hmm. So I, if we think in those terms, at least we have some metrics, although they're not precise and they're mm -hmm. not in the same time frame, but it gives you some idea of how we can profitably mm -hmm. look at this. If we're going to be involved, we get involved uh, uh, with the uh, least loss of life. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's enough. Uh, it, we have money. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't mean to sound cynical, but mm -hmm. it's enough to allow the Ukrainians to keep their dignity and maybe hold the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you don't see any uh, peace in the future? There may be peace if the European community decides that they are going to continue to uh, insist on sanctions against Russia as long as it continues mm -hmm. its support to the rebels from the East. Well, what do you think of this sanction? Uh, you hit a word, and uh, uh, what 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 effective sanction do you think that uh, we have on Russia or anyone else that uh, we feel that are not doing the things uh, correctly? Managing the management of the currency is one of the, one of the key items. Okay. Uh, and I, 
what is it, IFF, uh, uh, International. In a, uh, I, IMF, International IMF, Monetary right, Fund. Right, right. Now, I didn't really know how that worked until I went, I, I traveled to Khartoum, mm -hmm. and I realized that if you have imposed international banking sanctions on a country, mm -hmm. you can't use your debit card or your credit mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. So that affects It's a cash-only economy. The, the trade, too. Well, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. So if you, if you curtail access to banking services, mm -hmm. Uh, that, so that's the key, curtailing. That, that is, that to, is key. To right. And the IMF, how do they get involved in that? That's beyond what I know, mm -hmm. and so I can't comment on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do know that these sanctions, certain sanctions, are terribly effective mm -hmm. on an economy like Russia. And it seems to me that Russia is more or less in a foot race between the sanctions really taking effect on its economy and the progress that the uh, eastern Ukrainian rebels can make in gaining territory. Okay. And, uh, speaking of gaining territory, what do you think about the uh, fact that uh, we're saying that uh, uh, ISIS is being uh, defeated now, that the uh, uh, army and everything have them on the run and this city that they are trying to take would turn the whole situation around. Well I suppose you could say nothing focuses the mind like defeat mm -hmm. and ISIS military successes uh, focused uh, Iraqi minds uh, in a way that transcended are you Sunni, mm -hmm. are you Shia, uh, are you pro-ISIS, are you anti-ISIS? Uh, and the Iraqi army has managed to gather unto itself uh, Shia supporters, Iranian yeah. supporters, uh, some Sunni tribesmen, and they've begun to take territory back from ISIS to the point that uh, current reports say that uh, in order to maintain their uh, the numbers of their fighting troops, ISIS has uh, had to shoot deserters or would-be deserters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that, I can't think of anything think, that's likely right. to demoralize an army. Army then, faster you're than gonna that. Be, um, you're not just going to be enemy out there that uh, you, uh, what they, we call it backstabbing. Huh? <laughs> well, you got guys shooting at you in the front, they're the enemy. <laughs> right. Then you got guys in the rear who are uh, going to shoot you if you run. If you run, that's what I mean. Right. Sort of uh, 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 like backstabbing. Speaking of ISIS, too, what about uh, uh, the African leader now, is it Boga, uh, that's decided he's going to uh, actually. Uh, uh, work with ISIS. That's the newest Oh, Boko thing. Haram. Boko Haram, yeah. Boko Haram. Yeah. Um, from the reports I've seen, this is more for Boko... Show. Uh, more for show, more mm. for, for uh, Boko Haram than for ISIS. It's, it's unclear that ISIS has any support, uh, any interest in supporting Boko Haram. Well, well, well that's, that's my point. And uh, ISIS didn't, didn't uh, recruit them. <laughs> it's not like ISIS went over and recruited them, you know, to come with them. Uh, it seemed to me that they want to get in the news, so uh, they feel that they get some respect if they associate themselves with ISIS. Well, I think, that's, I think that was their, I think that was uh, Boko Haram's expectation. Mm -hmm. But if uh, uh, the Western dreams about ISIS come true and ISIS does collapse on the battlefield, uh, Boko Haram may find that it has attached itself to a corpse. Yeah, to the wrong uh, organization. Exactly. Uh, so they de-emphasize because they're not offering uh, any troops. They're not offering any funds, anything. This is just talk. Well, yes, because uh, I think Western nations and, and their bankers ha are making increasing progress to tie up ISIS funds mm -hmm. yeah. whenever and wherever That's they can. That's what I'm saying. So it's n not a positive thing for them anyway. So if you take away the funds, uh, they can't recruit, 
and the men they have in the field are demoralized and are trying to run away and they're being shot, mm -hmm. yeah. then what has Boko Haram actually embraced? Right. I, I think it's just a political movement, yeah, I think so. maybe. But uh, what about that uh, uh, election? Uh, I haven't heard much about that, uh, that they postponed in Africa. Oh, Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigeria. is uh, supposed to have been two weeks, uh, the election, and the postponement was supposed to be for two weeks. And I think it's close to two weeks. I haven't heard anything. President of Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, mm -hmm. first said that he didn't know he had to postpone elections mm -hmm. until he was told by his security advisors. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think is, what I think the glaring truth <laughs> it, in Nigeria mm -hmm. is that they have not effectively prosecuted that war against Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. And now it's grown to uh, it's grown to a conflict mm -hmm. where uh, the Cameroons and mm -hmm. and and one or two other neighbors of Nigeria mm -hmm. have to join Nigeria in attacking Boko Haram in order to keep them. So in as place. far as the election is, uh, it's nobody knows it. what nobody. I knows. mean, there's no date now before they were saying two weeks. You know, that was the thing. Okay. Now, now the other thing that uh, I. Like, bring attention to, uh, especially uh, uh, people in the United States, is procedure. Uh, during World War II, uh, we incarcerated uh, our enemies, and, uh, and I noticed that we incarcerate the Japanese went into uh, uh, camps, you know, uh, but uh, Germans and the Italians also are our enemies, but no camps were developed for German and, and uh, uh, Italian citizens in the United States. That's true. Um, but, and they're doing the same thing now with the Muslims. They're putting all the Muslim in one. All Muslims are bad, so they are paying attention to them because they feel that uh, ISIS and all of them uh, everybody, <laughs> if you're Muslim, you're, you're a member of ISIS. Yeah, I, I, was particular, I was particularly saddened by the story of the one Iraqi um, uh, man who had come to America, I think something like yeah. six weeks ago, right. and was shot right. Uh, right in his own doorway. Uh, you know, going back to... It, to World War II, going uh -huh. back to World War II, I, I, I think there's no way to no way to uh, uh, sweet talk, uh, sweeten this. That there was a, an element of well, racism. Prejudice, yeah. If, yeah. Well, well, the well that's what I thought. I thought yeah. it was just a lot of Americans. They uh, look at that, but uh, they can look at some of the things that we were doing too. And that was one that I thought really stood out. The Japanese were part punished, put in concentration camp. They were the enemies. They call them internment in, in, camps. Internment, that there's going to be any peace anywhere. Okay. And what we want to do, we want uh, uh, the Sweet Magazine is coming out honoring the former county exec, Wayne Curry. Wayne Curry and the Prince George's Press Prince George's, I'm, I'm thinking of newspaper, Prince George's Sweet Magazine. Prince George's Sweet Magazine, get a copy. We're going to honor our former county exec, Wayne Curry. See you next time. Thank you. Okay.